We are outside now at the parking lot to test out the SDK that DJI has released together with the Rainbow app. And uh, this will not be an extensive test of the Rainbow app, but I do want to test out the active track feature to see how well that works, because that's probably one of the most requested things that we are getting uh, with the new SDK support. I know there are other apps out there right now that are supporting the SDK like Litchi, but you have to pay for the Litchi app to actually test out the functionality. With the Rainbow app, you can at least try, I think it's five times that you have a chance to try out the features that the app is providing before you have to pay. So that could give you some sort of feeling if this is something for you or not. Five tries is pretty limited to test out the functionality of the app. I just found out that if you uninstall and reinstall the app, the counter resets, so you have another five tries. So let's get the drone airborne. I do want to add in a few disclaimers here. First of all, you have to be aware that there, of course, you know there are no sensors on the drone. So if you're doing active track with the, the DJI Mini 2, you have a risk of crashing the drone. So just be aware of that. That's the first thing. The second thing, I'm pretty sure that if you wreck the drone while using these third-party softwares, you will avoid the warranty and definitely the care refresh program from DJI. I'm trying to get that part verified, but let's assume until we know more that this would be the case. If you don't want to risk your drone, you shouldn't go down this path. So let's get it up and flying. And as uh, yesterday, I'm starting the drone manually. Let's just flick it into video. Make sure that everything is nice. We just put it at auto as it is right now. No, we are not putting it in auto because we don't want it to be... We just want this, the 1 over 60. Yeah. And then we bump up the ISO because it is a bit dark here today. Let's just put it at uh, these. You can see... You can see on this phone, these <laughs> are so small. It's very hard to uh, hit those buttons. So let's just do that and let's see where that brings us. That brings us overexposed with minus 0.3. So that would be good enough for now. So let's get it up in the air. So it's so gray here. And let's just position it up here somewhere. See here in the parking lot, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's underexposed with two, that's too much. So we need to bump up the ISO to 400 with the risk of noise introduced in the image. So, so far no surprises. Histogram looks good. Let's just take a few pictures here. And this is not a photography contest. contest. So we just put it here and not take it at two seconds. We maybe take it 150, 130, 120. Just bump it up like that. So 130. Let's just take a picture. And it's JPEG plus RAW. So, but this is basically the raw capabilities of the drone. So there's, there's, uh, there shouldn't be really no surprises there. So let's just try and go in here and see what else we can do. So we're going to test the tracking function. I think that would be the most obvious one to test. And then we use one of the trials here. Accept and fly. We're going to put this in video. So now this was not good. Because now we are losing one of the tries here. Yeah, so it's at least it's tracking me now. So let's try and go this way. So the tracking works to some extent. 
See what happens if I jump into the car here. So now we are trying to hit with the car instead. So now we only have two free flights left. So it better work. Let's see if we can make it follow. Just do it very slowly. So it lost me. See if it can lock on to me again. Okay, so let's use the last try here. So, so it better work now. <laughs> See, at least the camera tracks. Not optimal. And uh, I just switched the battery, so let me just show you what is going on when you're trying out these features. And now, <laughs> the gimbal is going all bananas there. Okay, interesting. I don't know what happened with the gimbal here. <laughs> I do want to say that I wrecked the drone here uh, during the Christmas holiday, so there might be something that is not really like it's supposed to be with this drone. Let's just jump in and take the tracking function again here. Close. It will actually allow you to do something like, uh, what is it called? Uh, can't remember. The one where it stays in the air and it will sort of track the object there below with the camera. But once you try to make it follow, it will ask you to subscribe to the app. And this is where it starts to cost money. So let's just, just see here. Spotlight. It's called spotlight. Yes, so the spotlight mode is actually working. So, so if I back away now, you see, it still follows. The car. But if I switch it into tracking, like this, and I say that I want the tracking enabled, it refuses to go there. This was a short demonstration that the SDK is actually working in real life. I'm not sure that uh, I really got you convinced about the tracking feature. <laughs> it's really working well here. But uh, I will uh, head over in the next video to the Litchi app, and I will use that one because I have paid for the beta version of the Litchi app, and that one is supporting uh, the SDK as well. So we should be able to test out more of this kind of tracking functionality with that one. I just thought it was a good idea to show you the Rainbow app because that would allow you to test this out for free, even though it's very limited what you can do in terms of tracking if you're not deciding to pay for it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.